Hello, ladies and gentlemen, fellow actors and enthusiasts. Welcome or welcome back to yet another episode of To Be An Actor. My name is Sigele Lovuyelini and I am an actress from South Africa. Multiple gods, one life, an endless journey of learning, a becoming. Hi. This is Sigele Lovuyelini. Welcome to my expression. This is our fourth episode. I can't believe it. I don't know if you can, but it's really a personal journey to me and I'm so grateful for this milestone. It may just be our halfway mark. We'll see how it goes. I hope that wherever that has been engaging with the space, I hope you have been finding value in the space and that there's a change and a shift and there's a move towards who you want to be in this acting industry. Now, without wasting any further time, today we are speaking securing representation. Can you guess what that is? Now we're talking agency or finding an agent, right? The industry hardly opens up to everyone, whether you have an agent or not. So for you to be seen in the right rooms or even get those audition briefs, a reputable agency is a need. Let's start by breaking down the role of an agency. They may have three things that they do. One is to be the in-between, between the production or the casting director and you as an actor. The second thing is them getting the information. They are the middlemen for a reason. They have the connections. They are the ones that get to communicate with the casting directors. They are the ones that get the briefs for the auditions. So they are your plug to what is up and happening in the industry. That is how you get your auditions. Any information about new work in the industry. That is if, of course, you are deemed one that is compliant to the brief, one that is the best candidate that fits the brief. The third thing that agents do is negotiate your contract, make sure that you have a good stay on set or a good working environment and help where they can in that capacity, right? And of course, this thing means that agents get to be incentivized by commission because they do the work, they do your admin, they basically take care of your acting day in and day out kind of admin of work relations and and that. So that is what the role of an agency is. Agency is not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your friend, although friendships may be formed in those spaces, but it's a business partnership first. And I want to really, really emphasize that because you can't expect them to make your career. Agents don't make your career. They assist you in really having a successful career. And you have a lot to do in that process. The next thing we're talking about today is building a strong resume or CV as an actor. What does that mean? How does and act to build a strong resume or CV. CVs are always about what you've done. So the first thing to do is make sure you list all your past experience. And I say all <laughs> loosely because we're not trying to find your school production in high school or, I mean, if it was really that prominent, please, by all means, if you played a support, if you played a lead character in your university film or, 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 or a student film, make sure that it is relevant. You must also connect what you're putting on paper with what you want in the future. And again, not everyone has the experience and that's okay. Never lie. Tell them this is what I've done or this is what, this is who I am. I've just done this acting program. I've done I've got a degree, I've got a diploma, I've got training in the sector, and these are the things that I learned in the process, or your majors, 
you know, so that they know what they are working with. And also list your relevant skills, right? That means putting forward what you are good at. Can you skate? Are you great at it? Put that there. Can you ride a bike? Put that there. Can you swim? Put that there. So those are skills that are really ha- like that are really great to have on your CV because it means that when there's someone that is looking for an actor or actress that can swim, you want the people to be put forward because that's something you're prominent at. So those are also the things that you need to list in your resume or on your resume. And maybe you can include your awards, your accolades, or things that were really meaningful in showcasing your talents, the sphere of acting, or notable achievements that demonstrate your talent and your dedication to the craft. Second thing you need to make sure you put on your resume or have accompanying your resume a quality head shot or and a demo reel. I spoke about this previous episode in a, yeah one of the previous episodes where a demo reel is one of the strongest things and a headshot. This is the first impression that they have of you, right? If you have a proper professional headshot and a demo reel, it means that the agency that gets to interact with your email or with your application already has an idea of what they're dealing with. They're not just dealing with someone saying, I'd like to be a part of the agency. How do I apply? Because they get many of those. Or they're not dealing with someone that just has a resume that is just words. There's nothing. There's no visual. Acting is a visual work, a visual game. So if you can capture me with your look in your professional, high quality headshot, I'm okay. And then you go on ahead and add a demo reel, even better. So how does that happen? Firstly, invest in a professional photographer that has experience in taking headshots specifically for acting or actors. Now, I can give you guys a recommendation that is really, really prominent in the industry. It is Skinny's Gallery. I'm going to have it in the description box. They really take amazing headshots. So, That's the first thing you need to do. Make sure that you have a great headshot to speak for you in those rooms when you are not there. Second thing, as someone that may potentially not have had work before, putting a reel together can be quite tricky. But it's not the end of the world. You can create your own demo reel before you step out to set. How do you do that? Shoot a monologue or three. Splice those together, edit those together, and offer that now obviously you're not just going to put your camera there and just get on with it that's why training is important right you would know how to get monologues that can fully demonstrate your range as an actor where they can see your potential so that you that's your first way to say this is who i am this is what i can do this is what i can do with limited resources kind of thing imagine me on a big set or on a set with a couple of other actors as well. So be mindful of that. You can always do these yourself. No need to be, but a headshot needs to be shot professionally. So have an online presence is another thing. Share your work. Share the little things you shoot in your spare time. Put your new work out there. If you've got something, put it out there. And let people know that, okay, I've just shot a short film. I've just shot work with who and who. A, Yes, some things require MDAs and make sure that you have the access to these things or you are granted permission to share, of course. You can't just share things without having known that you can do that. But it's so important for you to keep people up to date about what you do because you never know who's on your timeline. You never know who's watching. You never know who sees your demo rate and thinks, oh, I've got something. Or they remember once they have a brief Oh snap, there's Mang Mang, there's this lady, there's this guy that I think would be perfect for this. So putting out your work may be daunting, I know, but can have benefits. Make sure that you highlight your relevant experience on your resume and your skills and your training and make sure that you have a quality headshot and a demo reel and also share your work online. That's how you build a strong actors, resume or portfolio. Now, 
one of the biggest questions we get, right, is how do you find and approach an agency? So let's talk about finding and approaching representation. First of all, research, research, research. It is so important for you to find a reputable agency, not just any agency, because there's so many people that are in the game of representing people without the experience, right? And as someone that is new in the industry, you may be prone to fall for these scams. Find, or rather research, and find the relevant agencies in accordance to your acting style or your type of acting. Do you want to do theater? Do you want to do screen work? Do you want to do commercials? Second thing you need to do there, research the artist roster, right? Who is on their roster? What are they doing right now? Are they working? Are they potentially happy? Are you seeing movement? And check their track record and find out, you know, what's their reputation like? So that you don't find yourself in an agency where there's no one that you know, or there's just the vibes, you know? So it's important that you do your research also on who is on their agency and what they are known for. Make sure that they align with your goals and your values as well, because there needs to be an alignment. You don't just want an agency. You want to be aligned with someone, with this, with this company, with this agency to represent you so that it's never a hard task for a connection to take place. Second thing that you need to do is prepare your submission material. You don't just send an email and say, I want to be represented by you. You don't just send a DM saying, I'm wondering how can I join your agency? No, craft an actor's package. Show how ready you are. Show them how badly you want this. Preparation is key, okay? Now, we've just spoken about these. How do you craft these? Make sure that your actor's package has a quality headshot, has your resume and your reel to accompany that. Showcasing your past work, your skills, and your training experience. These should put you up ahead in line. And tailor your submission to each agency. Just like how you would send a CV to a workplace, well, not every job opportunity or vacancy is the same. It may be in the same field, but there are differences, right? You can't use just a one for all kind of package. You need to always be crafty. Another thing you need to do is attend industry showcases. These help you meet the relevant people face to face. I spoke about networking in my previous episodes. Go to these places, find these people in person. There's always something happening every other month, right? I remember meeting my now agent, I think four years ago, three years ago, at a workshop that was hosted by Saga, which is South African Guild of Actors. I've heard about this woman. Let me walk up to her and, you know, see what I can do. And I walk up to her and ask her about it. Hey, how are you? My name is Sigal Edwa and I have heard about your agency. I'm looking to find representation. Do you guys have space? What can I do to, you know, in that space, you must think fast. I can't really remember what I said, but I think her response was very kind. And was just like, we're currently not taking anyone in. But try again next year, you know, heart, oh, shattered. But we had the encounter and I only got in that agency last year. This is to say that it's not always going to work. It's not always going to be a yes. It's not always going to be a yes. So just keep pushing, but find yourself in those spaces so that you can have those encounters and they can see you and also get your energy and see if there's an alignment in that space. So by understanding the role of an agency and you conducting thorough research and presenting yourself effectively, you can increase your chances of securing proper and reputable agency or representation that aligns with your career goals. If this happens, it aligns with career aspirations and also propels your acting journey forward. One of the biggest things Make sure that agency is signed under the PMA, which is the Personal Managers Association. 
already by that stamp, it means that they are in right standing with a lot of things, right? Regulations and, and, and. Because that association is some kind of standard for the industry. So if your agency is signed under the PMA, it's repeatable. I've heard the stamp story and I cannot emphasize enough. Do your research. Because that is the reason why you will find yourself in a situation that you would not looking to be in. There are people that are looking to make money over your desperation. People can smell your desperation. So make sure that you've done the work. Our previous episodes really touch on making sure that by the time you reach this space, there's a security in self and what it is that you want so that you don't just go ahead and want anything. So peeps, make sure that you know exactly what you're doing, okay? To protect yourself, ask around. Ask about these people. Surely someone has worked with them if they are really an agency. If they are a reputable agency, you are going to know. Once you ask around, it's gonna start looking good. And also, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Another thing, if they want money off the bat, scam alert. There's just those little things that show you immediately. And I mean, they can say, okay, cool, that the money is for this and this and this. And if it does make sense, and if you know someone or you know people that are also under this agency, reach out and ask, you know, so that you know that you are not just paying for something you don't even know is going to be true or it's going to happen. Don't become a victim because you chose the easy way out. This we can't stress enough because we know this too well. People are scammed even with auditions. People are scammed, people pay for, you don't pay for auditions. You don't do that. You don't pay to get in an audition room. So really be careful and be prudent in your ways. I've got something for you guys. Check the description box below with all the reputable agencies of the industry that are signed with the PMA, which are the agencies you should be looking for. So they all have their requirements. So please do your research before flooding people's emails and calling them incessantly. Please, you don't want to bore anyone. You want to be pleasant, you want to be fresh air. So make sure you back it up by making sure that you are prepared. You're sending them all the relevant information. You are one of those that, oh, okay, this one is really prepared. You know, be pleasant and accept any outcome out of that because it can go either way and it may not be the time. Seasons are everything. And also, just so you guys know, a lot of agencies do their intakes in the first quarter of the year. Yes, we're already out of that now. So this means that it may prove to be even more difficult for one to get into an agency. Yeah, not the greatest news to know, but be patient. It's a journey, it's a lifetime if you are really looking forward to being a part of this industry for a long time. As we conclude yet another episode of To Be An Actor, remember, remember that securing representation is not just about finding someone to represent you. It's not just about that. There's more. It's about building a partnership that is built or based on mutual trust, respect, and shared goals. So make sure you align. Take time to research, prepare, and showcase your talents effectively, and trust that the right representation will amplify your opportunities and support you on your journey to becoming a success in the acting journey, or in your acting journey. I do hope that you do find the agency that really suits and aligns with your career goals and aspirations. Join us next time for more invaluable tips and advice on navigating the world of acting. Until then, you best break a leg. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, and share, and comment. Let me know what your questions are about the idea of securing representation and also what you're looking forward to and what you've learned so far and where you are, what you're feeling about this space. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next Friday. Bye. Now, on the next episode, we are talking all things preparing for auditions. How do you make sure that this never 
wrecking ordeal or experience is one that you are best prepared and ready for. Find out in the next episode of To Be An Actor.